All right, hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. And today we are gonna be talking about cut work. So it's an introduction to cut work. And then we're going to talk about it a bit more, but we're gonna do fancier stuff. I tried making one for you, but my digitizing mojo is gone so I will make a free one for you guys to play with so yes good morning uh who we got Shannon good morning Victoria Kathy good morning uh Nancy Joyce hi Joyce uh Susan Weehy waves uh Jennifer Ann Robin's quilt basket that's a lovely thought Leah Lynn our Lynn is here Susan, we, we, he waves back at me. That's awesome. You guys, um, I thought, uh, before I started that I do just a quick review, you know, like in the cartoons where they do a, a thought thing. So, uh, yeah, here we go. So spring is nature's way of saying let's party. And this is the font that, um, Eileen Roche was talking about on Thursday. It's stunning. It's fun to play with. So we've got some swirlies, just, you know, normal. Toronto, Canada. Oh, that's cool. Hello. Ronog, hello. Hello. Jennifer, hello. So we've got this one, um, flying uh, clovers, I guess I called it. Kind of cute. I like it. This is one of my favorites. The book is always better because it's true. I used scraps on this one and just highlighted in um, black. This one, I didn't do this part, so we'll just pretend it's done. Uh, it goes this way. I decided to use gold metallic on this boy, and I love it, actually. I love it. So here's just another version of this. It still looks good. Six of one, half dozen of the other. I think I probably like this one better, but who knows? Uh, if you guys remember the coffee or the tea, more coffee or tea time. I love this. This was so much fun to do. And just lately, we've got uh, Stay Sharp. It was a mystery one. And uh, yeah, Karina, it's good to finally see you live again. Well, we missed you. We missed you. So that's my mug rugs in review. I keep these. I got to finish it, obviously. And then I'm going to iron them. And I will, um, I will uh, send them to hospice for the nurses. Or if they want to decorate some rooms or whatever they want. Miley says hi. Hi, Miley. Hi, Miley. That's awesome. <laughs> Machine came home from the spa. Yes. There we go. Um, oh, Jill. Hi, Jill. A really wet UK. Coronation today. I haven't had a moment to check. Or I guess last night. Um, I'll have to I'll have to watch it because yeah. Cindy King. Hi, Cindy King. So hi to our wonderful mods and good morning too. Yes. Good morning, OML gang. Oh, we got lots going on. So I have all my scissors laid out and we're gonna do some experiments. So what is cut work? Hands up if you guys have done cut work before. Um it's a lot of fun and I really like doing it. So let's take a look at what cut work is. Now that noise you hear is my mouse because I didn't have time to program these in, but that's okay. And go to this one. Now these are from Anita Good Design. So this is what I think of when I say cut work napkins your grandmother napkins beautiful linens with corners cut out you know that um also you know reminds me of it not so much the colors but we can modernize anything right but uh these are just ones from a need a good design because they happen to have a lot i did see one on uh, a few on stitch delight as well my favorite places um cindy hello only at an Anita Good Design event. Yeah, well, that's eh, okay. 
Now you can go a little more, you know, modern with it. Look at this pillow. Is that not stunning? I think it's absolutely amazing. Um, but you can see where the cut work is because the fabric below shows through. And we're going to work on that uh, at some point in our lessons. Not today. Today is basic. The same thing, but in orange. Whoa, that's cool. So you can see where the cutouts are. Um, it, it's the orange shows through, but aren't they beautiful? And here's a really fancy one that I thought was really neat and not beautiful. So this one has applique and um, cutwork. So the cutwork is where you see the white here. And it's almost like um, freestanding lace in fabric. That might be another way of describing it. Those pillows. Yeah, no kidding, huh? I actually really like the orange one for some reason. I, I don't know what I'd do with an orange pillow, but it is beautiful. So that is what it is. That is what it is. Let me clear that. And we should be good. Yep. Yeah. All right. Back to the scissors. So... The way I'll take the teal, Susan Wee says, yeah, I know, I know. Isabel, hello. I can't remember if I said uh, hello to you. Stabilize. Okay, we're getting to all that. We're going to start. So what we're doing is this is I'm just going to do a small one today so we can play around with it. Four by four hoop and use water soluble stabilizer because think of freestanding lace. When we cut it out, we want nothing there. It's just empty, right? So freestanding lace and think of old linens. I bet you if everyone looks in their cupboards, you would see um, one of your grandmother's napkins or something like that with holes in it. It's beautiful. I should have looked. I'll look for next Saturday to see if I can find um, one of the ones from the old Samantha and the old Beatrice. So see what I can find. So scissors. So what we have to do, we're going to put this on the machine. And just like applique, it's going to stitch out the parts that we're going to cut out. Now in applique, don't get confused, on applique, we're covering it with fabric this we're taking it away so you have to cut the fabric only and try your darndest not to cut the water soluble stabilizer so we are going to test out what scissors uh, are going to work the best for that so i've got these tula pink trimmer ones and look at the nice point on it right here i'm thinking that will work very nicely. So that's just a one. I've got the Nom Nom, mini Nom Noms. And I thought these would work because this is a really good point. Make a good point right there. I made a good point. And now these are little snips. Um, they're actually tulip pink, of course. Yay. I know. I love um, the nice and sharp and that's good now these are just um ones that i've picked up they're everywhere in quilt shops and this this one specifically i keep at my machine for um it's just excellent for doing stuff like this um can any of this process be done with a brother scan and cut you could but i think <laughs> think it would work better this way that's a good question though hmm I'll write that down and we'll see so these are the scissors that we're gonna try and um, yeah I don't know if it would work you could cut the fabric and hoop it I don't know if it would match up exactly that might be the only issue so uh, yeah my Odie's Barking. Sorry about that. The boys, the big boys are upstairs with B. So um, he'll stop 
eventually when he sees no threat or something. So apologies, apologies. So um, I use my little snips every day. Yeah, they're super handy. They're super handy. So um, let's see. Odie, stop. Odie, stop it. I'm fine. No need to protect me. I'm good, man. I'm good. So let's go to the machine and we're going to get started and then we'll take our time doing the uh, cutting and um, see how it works. So yeah, it's going to be cool. So let's go to the machine and oh, look, I have Bob and police. Now, what do you guys think? Let me go closer. What do you guys think? Do you guys think I'm going to make it on this much bobbin? Should I risk it? What does the bobbin police say on this? Um, Miley's looking for the dog. I'm I'm sorry. My Odie barks. He's a dash hound. They all bark a lot, you know. I think I might risk it and see we can change your bobbin. Oh, I've heard saying changing. <laughs> Uh, Lynn says, yep, you'll make it positive, Lynn. All right. <laughs> All right. Ooh, Elizabeth, don't say that word. No, 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 no. All right. I'll change the bob and I wasn't going to, but I'll put it in my bob and graveyard for another day. I didn't even have one. At, I, that's how I was. That's how much I was not going to change it, but yeah, we're right. You guys are right. So Bob and police have spoken and the verdict is a new Bob. And I guess I could have moved the camera back. There we go. So thank you, Bob and police. This one's for the graveyard. Woohoo for sure. So risk it. <laughs> when in doubt, take it out. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Cindy West. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Now I'm going to do a rather bright green for the stitching. I am going to zoom you in on this so you guys can see it just a little bit better. And I could adjust that, but I will fix that for next time. I'm going to get a new camera hanger thing that doesn't move so easily. So I am going to stitch the first step and that is the cutouts. So again, fabric, water soluble stabilizer, 7511 needle, all that good stuff. I'm using really bright so you guys can really see it. There's eyeballs there. I know they're hard to see. And this is just a small one. We're doing it on the four by four hoop. So uh, yeah, let's stitch out the first step and then we'll see how it covers up. So, um, what stabilizer? Water soluble stabilizer because you do want it to disappear um, when it's done. And these can be elaborate designs. You can always, if you want more, for like a cutaway when it's done, you can always cut it out if need be. So now these are just little, so this will be a little bit of a challenge for sure. Um, but you know, we can do it. We can do it. Turquoise, handed little ones, my prized possessions. <laughs> Good morning from across town. Really? That's cool. So this is the part of the design that we're going to cut. So again, like applique, but not. And the edges are going to all be covered up with satin stitches. So someone asked, is it hard to digitize? Well, no, it's just kind of applique without the fabric. That's all it is. Okay, so the next step is the rest of the design. And it only takes 10 minutes because we're doing it small. But let's go back to the desk and... Let's try cutting it out. Smaller will tell you which scissors are best. Yeah, I just thought it was um, a good one uh, to do. So there's not much cutting and there's a lot of stitching, but we have time to experiment. So I'm going to try these trimmers. Oh, they're lovely. Tula pink trimmers. Now we want to try not to cut through the water soluble stabilizer 
However, it is not the end of the world if you do. So I'm just kind of, now you don't want to see, I'm kind of putting my hand underneath it under like this, and I've got my finger where it is, but I'm not pushing. You don't want to push anything and please be careful doing this. Now what I'm going to do, let's see, it's pretty hard to do it without, I'm pretty sure I cut through. Um, did I, did I, did I? Yeah, I did a little bit. Okay, so these ones are too good. That kind of cut it through. But this part, it'll go fantastically. So it's not the end of the world. It really isn't. Let's try these, you know, common ones, I would say. This would make a nice pin cushion. Yes. Like standalone lace, should the bobbin and top thread agree in color? It depends on what you're doing. Now this one, I'm just playing around with it, you know, so it doesn't really matter. But um, if it's on like a napkin, yes, I would say uh, for sure. Sue, do you use pre-wound bobbins? <laughs> yeah, have you ever known me to wind a bobbin? Not gonna happen. Okay, these ones are really good. I can get under and then I can feel with my finger here on the back without pushing, you don't want to change the positioning of anything, that I'm not cutting through. So look, I did that, let me finish it now. Okay, so these ones are really good. The points on it make all the difference. So uh, maybe exacto blade to start the cutting, just as long as you don't go through. Um, if you really, really cut out the water soluble stabilizer, like almost completely, I would just put a little piece of tape across and that just keeps the stability of your, um, hooping. And we like to keep things stable. We don't want anything to shift. I mean, satin stitches are pretty forgiven, forgiving. Um, but we want to be careful. So, so far, these babies are top. That was fantastic. So let's try the snipper things here to get one started. So again, this is, this is my technique for it. Now these are really sharp too. Whoops. Now this is something, again, you take your time. So these are good for starting and it looks like they're good for trimming, trimming it out because they're so sharp. Oh yeah, that's, that's easy. They're not really made for cutting. It's more like trimming. So, okay, that's easy. So tulip pink snips. I don't really like cutting them out this way, but for starting it, absolutely. That's great. So this one is still number one. This is number two for starting it. Um, spit on another piece of WSS and stick it over the hole. You can. I try not to spit while I'm working, but you know, you never know. Uh, let's try. I'm going to finish trimming out with these ones. So you can always use two scissors. So use your little snippy things to start it. And then a small pair or a large pair of embroidery scissors and that really works for me. That's my favorite thing probably. So yeah. And let's see, I smoothed it down. I missed a little bit. Sometimes you might have to go once or twice around. It's especially for one like this, it's really small. It's really small, but it'll still look good. You could see how it's going to start looking already. So Judy Quilt, I will clear that up. Now I have one more that I started that I poked through. So I'm just going to trim that out. Let me just have the circle. So, um, yes, inexpensive scissors that you can, um, you know, get at, at any store seem to be rocking. And of course, tulip pink, cause you know, it's tulip pink. So you don't have to, you know, be perfect about it. If you cut through the stitches on the outside, don't worry about that either. Just uh, try to be careful. It takes a bit of practice. Lynn, this is something I want you to practice, my dear, 
because uh, I think you'd be really good. Hoop mat. Is there a special mat for hoops? Uh, this is my favorite thing ever. It is from Dime, and what it does, it just keeps everything from sliding. So if I want to cut it like this, I can. It's not going anywhere. Um, this is my second one. I used the first one so bad it was, it was so often um, that it was not looking too good. So oh, I got a new one. Favorite thing, I use it every day, all the time. Hey, these ones work almost perfectly. Did you see that? I like that. So yeah, the hoop mat to me makes a, a big difference. It's not a cutting surface though, which anyone who gets a hoop mat, we, we all make that mistake, uh, even just a little bit. So you have to be careful with that. Okay, so applique scissors. Yeah, that worked well too. That worked really well. I'm happy with that. Look, I got little little biddly bugs all over the place. It looks like wonderful. So, I mean, that's good enough. Let's see how our satin stitches. So just about anything works. These were um, a little too extreme, but I could practice with these. Um, Isabel, I use a seam ripper. Oh, yeah, of course you could do that quite easily. Good idea. I didn't think of that. I was busy thinking about scissors. So these ones and these ones are just about the same. I like the smaller ones and for whatever reason, these ones are incredibly sharp and they stay on my machine. So yeah, for sure. Um, that's it. Okay. So let's go back to the machine and nice and close up kind of I could fix it I might now what we're gonna do even though it looks like there's something behind there isn't it's just wash away stabilizer and guess what we are going to wash it away so yeah hit the like button guys yeah my screen says 115 watching but only 47 likes um, yes, please. We got to keep this going. I'm kind of on a thin rope with everything. So please, the least you can do is just like it and share it even onto your own timeline on Facebook. Every share counts, every like counts, and it makes a difference. And the more people who watch the videos, I get a little bit, and I mean a little bit of money from, uh, YouTube and it's going to keep me going now. So awesome. So now with applique, when we do our positioning and then we put the fabric down and we do a tack down, that's basically what we're going to do here. Um, we're going to cover up, but hold everything. And, um, it's going to do that for each one of them. And that just makes sure that everything is going to line up. So, my favorite zigzag first, and, oh yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful for sure. I like it. I like it. Isn't that cool? Alright, causing me issues here. Boop, okay. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see it better. Just give me a sec. You can hear my mouse clicks and just to make it look better. Hopefully I'm not making it blurry, but, and there we go. I think that's much better. Much, much, much better. Jill, thank you so much. You are wonderful. I think Jill donates money every video, which is so awesome. I can't um, thank you enough for all your support. Now, look how good that looks. Now, there's a little bit of black showing through, but I think that's okay. I think it's okay, but thank you. Just share it on Facebook. All right, thank you. Only you guys can do it. I share it around, but only you guys can stitch out something and post it in another group saying, you know, blah. 
There we go. Evelyn, Sue, you're the best at explaining these techniques. Why, thank you. I think this is beautiful. I think I probably could trim a little better, mind you. But I don't think it'll matter either. You can always tidy it up if you want to. Isabel, thank you so much. I appreciate it, you guys. I really do. It's been a tough three weeks, and it's not over yet, so... I just want my mojo back, man. I just want it back. So, digitizing for this, we could do a class. Um, PE Design 11, I was playing around with it. It has a wizard for cut work. So you just do the outline that you want and you click on it and it could fill it with different things so it it looks does look like freestanding lace in between different patterns and stuff and it's really good so i think that'll all come off but i'm pretty happy with it now this is why i think maybe cutting it might be uh cutting it on a cutter might be more hassle than it's worth um, because getting it to line up it's pretty precise um, you could try it and let us know but I have the feeling it wouldn't work there's so much more stretch um, that would be one thing is that you would have to use iron-on um, fusibles so before you cut it so that it stays really well like we don't want it to stretch we don't want it to move we don't want any of that so look at that i love it now the rest of the decoration is gonna stitch out so snowflakes um i must do a skull with cutouts and i will do something um more traditional too Ooh, shared it on my facebook's um, feed. Yay! Thank you, Carolyn. Uh, Tracy, thank you. Thank you. But I will make a free one so everybody can try this technique. It'll be really simple because we will be focusing, you will be focusing on the cutting part rather than anything else. So it'll snowflake. What else? Let's think of other things you can do. Cut work. I mean, the uh, napkins, no matter what you do, that is going to be stunning for sure. Um, I think it would be amazing to be able to do it again. Like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to find, um, see if I have any to go and show it. Let's see. Um, Good morning. I'll go back and rewatch it from the beginning. Liked and shared. Gonna be hot in the 90s. Pretty sunny out here. I think we'll have some hound flowers, which we say that because um, Beetlejuice and Tank like to sit in the garden box, which is awesome because I usually plant them. So we just say they're growing a hound flower. Curtains. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Uh, a scarf. I'm pretty sure I need a good design has scarf ends with cutouts. Just anything that you want to shape the bottom. I think the old traditional one would be like a tablecloth or, you know, a thin table runner. Phyllis says corners on tablecloths would be pretty, so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, they, when they are, they, I mean, you know, my great, great grandma, they didn't do it like this, though. They did it all by hand, for sure. Let's see. Sharon says, my divorce was final last week. First time in my life. I lived alone at the age of 64. I feel so stress-free and absolutely wonderful. That is actually so positive. It's amazing. So thank you for saying that. That's awesome. I, I just have to pick up all the pieces that were thrown around and then I've lived below alone before I have Beatrice and Sam right here and of course my dogs and of course you guys I could not do anything without you guys this is my passion this is what I want to keep doing I just have to kick it up just a little bit and then I can make it 
How about using King Star Thread? Ooh. Woo woo. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awesome, King Star. Hmm. I'll have to design something for that. Pretty centered. Yeah, it's a beautiful design. But you can see how the cutwork kind of incorporates into the design and looks amazing. So this is just like a um, snowflake kind of thing. Um, I noticed there's not a lot of cut work out there. So I was thinking that we need to change that and do some cut work. A cut work mug rug is probably uh, pretty darn useless. So I don't think I'll be doing that, but Ooh, I heard Kingstar's coming out with a new purple. No way. No way. It would be also be pretty around the collar of a t-shirt to dress it up. I have, if you go on to Dime, so D, Z, or Z as the Americans say it, um, GDNS.com, and look at their t-shirt and shirt remakes. I have one of them. And I have a t-shirt sitting here and I would love to do it. So if you guys want to do a project like that, um, it's going to take a bit of time. We'd probably have to do extra videos for it. Uh, I think it would look really good. I love King Star's thread. Tablecloth for cut work sounds wonderful. Beautiful. You can do it traditional or like what I'm doing here, not traditional. And it's still looks amazing. Phyllis says, yes, please. Suited the fob design. The first attempt didn't go to the USB. I don't know why. Tried it again. Saved it like a million times and hopefully it'll work out. We'll let you know. Yes. If you place another fabric under the upper layer, you could use it for a mug rug. Yeah, you could. I guess. I'm just thinking, hmm, would I like that? I don't know. I guess I could just kind of, that's more reverse applique, but I think that would work too. All right. I'm thinking, is this going to, hopefully uh, it's going to change my mojo on the sleeves of a shirt or at the bottom knee ankle of jeans. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? Any of those things. Um, Elizabeth, almost too pretty for a mug rug table runner. Yeah. Lady says, I'm sorry you're going through that, Sue. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Um, it's just the, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, I wouldn't want my coffee staining that. Yeah, but mug rugs are washable. So we'd also have to solve the problem about the batting, because I think unless it's bigger than these, I think it would be hard to cut it out. But I'll come up with something. Um... So you could get AG design to design a cell phone case in the hoop design, or I could do it. I could do it. There's so many different sizes though. I would love to have a nice place to put my, um, cell phone. I don't usually carry it with me because I have my iWatch and my iPad and my iMac. <laughs> So I don't need to. I just kind of leave it here downstairs in my office. But I need to start uh, carrying it around because we, we, Lynn, I wanted to tell you this. We have a new ring doorbell that Beatrice and I uh, wired into the house. Yes, we did. And it works perfectly. So the rule is when you come to my house, you have to make a face at the door so I can see it just fine. Just continue to do what you love. I know I'm really trying hard, um, but I've totally completely run out of money and I'm a little bit short for fixing patches. So, um, okay, could you, I modified one of their designs. I could really see this as a small clutch. Ooh, ooh. Now that gives me an idea. Wouldn't the shape be beautiful on a, not a zipper bag, but like a clutch, a bag sort of thing? Yeah, that gives me an idea. 
I love it when you can make the designs like in a different shape. So it's not, um, um, it's not, you know, flat, plain. And it's not hard to do, and this technique will help you do it. It's awesome. So it's just stitching away. I think it'll be done shortly. Yeah, we got about five minutes. So perfect iPhone crossbody bag. Oh, you guys are on. Um, you guys are on. I'll do that. That would be, I love making bags. I think that is the coolest thing to do in the hoop on your embroidery machine. It is just amazing. Um, front pocket of a pocket pillow. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Chris Yost, hi Chris Yost. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. I think Chris Yost donates every video too. Um, and I appreciate that so much, especially right now. I just really want to keep doing this. I have so many ideas. They're a little slow developing right now, but they will come. <laughs> Is it possible to hoop uh, and vinyl? Yes. Yes, you can. So it depends what kind of vinyl you mean. Um, heat transfer vinyl, yes, but you have to be careful because too many scissor, scissor needle penetrations, it'll go right through it. Um, if you're talking marine vinyl or the fake leather, yes. Um, again, you have to be a little bit careful. You can't really do too many dense designs. Um, I'm more of a fabric flasher in the ring doorbell than my mug. <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Oh, you guys are hilarious. I just wanted to show Beatrice she can do anything if she puts her mind to it. We don't need anyone to wire it into the house. However, I did make it clear that um, unless you know about electricity, don't wire anything else. This I knew it was easy. So look at the design. So it's just got a little bit more in between, but that looks so amazing. I actually like the colors and yes, I am, uh, Shannon says, was it easy to do? Yes, extremely easy. Um, B had never done anything like that, and I kind of, I didn't make her do it, but I encouraged her to be the one, and I supervised. Joyce Booze, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Susan Weehy, oh, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I, I promise I will do my best to keep this going because... We, we still have a lot of learning to do. Um, there's always new techniques coming up. So I would like a cut work pattern that I could use on handbags or on a quilt block. Okay, noted. Yeah, if you guys ever have ideas like this, hop over to the OML Embroidery University um, Facebook group and just throw them at me there and people will you know, come up with ones too, based on what you suggested. Someone said a couple weeks ago, I'd love for you to do cut work. Here I am rocking it out, doing cut work. Uh, I, there's no point in me making videos that you guys don't want to see. So this is what I'm doing here. So yes. So what thickness of vinyl do I need for the key fobs? You can use any thickness you want. You don't want it too thin and you don't want it too thick. One of my favorite things to do on it, because you have to have a piece for the front and a piece for the back, I like to do a nice fat triple stitch and it makes it look like leather. Leather that they use the two needles to do. Yeah. Um, so thickness... I really honestly have a very difficult time finding it in um, Canada. So um, somebody sent me some and it was on rolls and I think it, little rolls and it was from Joann's. Oh, I used the bejeebers out of that. I love it. I love it. So you don't want it really thick. You got to think, uh, put the two pieces together and see what you think of the thickness. That's how I would do it. Um, like I said here, I 
I really don't have a choice if it's there and it's a color I want. I just kind of take it because we can't pick. But it's, um, a lot of people call it, um, marine vinyl, that sort of thing. So, Jill says, I love the green and black together. Do you need some? <laughs> I, oh, Ellen Stratton, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if I need any. I could use some. Uh, the other projects um, I was thinking of is Dime again sent me uh, a gorgeous purse. And I also have the Sally Tomato um, ones with, I bought the kits. Um, and I think it would be really fun to do that. The Sally Tomato ones are stunning. But I'd like to do projects as well. This is turning out way better than I thought. I am very glad I did the green like that. It's stunning. But yeah, blues the whole bit. Um, thank you to everyone who donated today. I really appreciate it. You wouldn't believe how it adds up and how important it is right now because I still want to do it. I will figure everything out though. It, it, everything's, everything's okay. I would love to see a purse project. Uh, I know, I know. And if it, when I bought the kit, it has everything everything. Sue, I found you when I purchased my first embroidery machine. You have given me the confidence to use and try new things. All right. I love to hear that. I love to hear it. Be confident. Learn, stitch, smile. That's what the uh, OML embroidery logo is. So yeah, try it. You're not going to wreck anything. It's not a big deal if you make a mistake. I almost always make them. Happy music! Look at that! So, let's go back to the desk and see how stunning this is. I think we need to zoom. Uh, it's not much of a zoom, but it will do. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at how beautiful. It has a little bit of edges like that. Um, but that right there is cut work. And oh my goodness, you could put it on anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, yes, it's water soluble stabilizer, but I don't have any water here, but I just want to give you guys a better idea of it and show you what you can do as a second step. Ugh, having a hard time with my scissors. So the water soluble stabilizer is gone. You put it in, you know, water and you're left with this beautiful, you know, cutout part. You can see my nail through it. So then what you can do, I don't seem to, uh, I do, I do. Hold on. I just have my stash. Look, it would look better if it was bigger. You guys can't see. Let me move it up. But this is what we're talking about. If this was bigger, the fabric underneath will show. So yeah, get rid of all your water soluble stabilizer and you could just sew it. Um, so many things you can do. Um, notebook or journal, co journal cover. Hmm. We could have fun with that. What does OML stand for? It stands for, well, if you guys notice, the logo is a really cute um, puppy dog. And when I started this like 20 years ago, I had three wieners um, and they were called Oscar, Maya, and Lena. And I thought I was really funny because um, it sounded like Oscar Meyer wieners. So... I loved my, I love my weenies. They're such sweet dogs. So yeah, that's what OML stands for. And it just kind of started on that. So there you go. OML, Oscar, Maya, Lena. Unfortunately, they've all passed away by now. And uh, I have my Odie and I have my hounds and that's it. So I want you guys to try some cut work. I will get a free 
but simple design so you guys can try this. And cut work, like I said, I, I, I had trouble finding some, um, I don't know, some pictures, I guess, I'm trying to say, or different ideas or using it in different ways. There just doesn't seem to be that much out there. So I think we should change this. And I think we should come up with a whole bunch of different ways to do this. I'm Belinda. Hello, I'm very late today. Thank you for joining us, though. I was also thinking um, cut work bookmarks. I think that could be stunning with flowers and stuff. Hmm. So we got lots to do. So, oh, thank you very much, Janie Hearn. Oh, I appreciate it. So don't be afraid to try cut work. I would guess that you probably have some cut work patterns already in your stash. Um, if you don't, like I said, I'll make you a simple one just for free because I want you guys to try it out. That would be a beautiful pocket on the front of a handbag. Um, it would be, wouldn't it? I can think of a million things to do with this, but we'll, we'll start off with traditional and then we'll move on to not so traditional. And I think it's, um, I think it's awesome. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Now you guys can see that it's not that hard to do. If you can do applique, you can do cut work. If you have PE design, it's just like two clicks and super easy. So Leah says, thank you for another great lesson. Thank you, mods. Everyone have a great weekend. See y'all next week. See y'all on Monday for um, Mug Rug Monday. Yeah. I have an affiliate account with Imbrilliant, so that would be awesome. So I want you guys to try it, and I want you guys to post it in the OML Embroidery University um, um, Facebook group so we can get inspiring everyone else. It's not hard, and it sure looks beautiful. So thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone. Mug Rug Monday. Make sure you're there. Be there.